Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Sorry I missed some of you last evening. This morning I, I was waking up wondering what I should talk about in the way of instruction. Every day is a day of instruction, isn't it? One way or the other. And it dawned on me that I think what we need to emphasize uh, the rootedness of Celtic Christianity to the land in which we live, the landscape, and the home, particularly the home. Among our folk, uh, we never say, are you coming to Sabbath or Sabbath? We don't say that. They might be conducting it in their own houses. We don't have a central gathering place. Well, I guess we do. Because uh, we made a locust spray right up the big old, old house. And uh, we have our high Sabbath, our communion, our Eucharist there. You never know. Sometimes the place is filled to overflowing. But that doesn't matter. Because what Celtic Christianity really is, it's not a church. We are not a churchy people. You think you have some hillbillies down here? <laughs> New York State out in the Allegheny Mountains has her share too. They're all the same blood, the same bloodline, and they're great people. And I couldn't say that some church lady who was in the church every Sunday was any better than some guy who maybe only shows up for a hunting blessing because we don't know what's in his heart, do we? And he might be close to the earth. And we get away from that. We're supposed to be close to the earth. We are supposed to feel that. You know what? We're supposed to celebrate life. We are required to celebrate life. You know, people think they're doing God any favor by saying, well, I can't wait to get out of this place and get up there wherever you are. They say, what do you want from me? I've given you. What? Do you ever take time to look at the earth, the creeks, the water flowing? Do you stop to look at the deer struggling as they did this year through the snow? Look out and say, boy, those poor animals. But it's all so beautiful, so wonderful. I, I can never get over it. And you know, and Obviously, I think, probably drawing close to a time when I'll be gathered to my ancestors. But what a fantastic experience this life has been, thanks to the kind of spirituality that the ancestors gave me. Of course, the civilized people of Europe regard the Highland Scot and the North American Indian is equal in their savagery. Now, we were both savage people. We were hospitable. <laughs> we trusted strangers. We loved the land and all that was there. So, what we have to do is we have to have more time for contemplation. We think of the house something very sacred about the very heart of the house. And in a lot of the old Highland houses, the fireplace was at the eastern wall. And that's often where the candlesticks would be. And maybe a simple Celtic cross wouldn't even have to be a carved cross, maybe like the St. Bridget's cross that was just taken and woven out of rushes to put on the wall. It doesn't have to be elaborate. 
the father of the house or the mother, the great leader of the family, the, the back of that person would be to the east and the family would gather around. We still do it like that. Um, kind of uncomfortable in a way because that's the source they eat. <laughs> and uh, sometimes it gets kind of hot. It's kind of good to stand for the gospel because you got a chance to move. But there's something about this that I would never trade for anything. The closeness of people coming together because they want to. Because they belong. You see, among the Highlanders, the uh, clan and the spirit of clan buttresses the religious feeling and the faith that we have also buttresses the clan. They kind of fit together. So that the people of your spiritual group aren't just church members. They're like clansmen, clanswomen. They're important to us. And when a baby, we don't baptize babies, but we give a child blessing. And when the celebrant, the priest, takes that infant from the arms of the mother, and he has asked, and what are you going to call this child? And the mother says well, what it is. And you make eye, the priest makes eye contact with the child. They make eye contact. You say, well, that's dumb. They can't understand English. No, but they will in time. And it's already registered. And you say, Anya, Anya Noreen, we have waited so long for you. And they are looking in the eye. I have never had a child, ever, cry at a child blessing. And then you turn the child around and you say, these are your people. They are going to support you, help you to become a good woman. We are all here to help you whenever you need help. And then you go on and you put the three drops of water on the floor. It's not a bad thing. Our rights are very simple. Born of the earth, the land around us, they're beautiful and they're true, and they're good. And they refer us to God and creation. People say, well, you know, like that old hymn that they sing in uh, the film, Cold Mountain, that took place supposedly here in North Carolina. And um, they use the, the form of singing called Sacred Heart. That's beautiful. But the sentiment of that hymn is, but I don't care to stay here long. Well, that has a good sentiment, but it also, come on, how ungrateful can you be? I mean, I look around me. What better, more beautiful part of the entire world could God have given the people to live than what you have here? What we have when we look out, when we see the forest and the mountains and the mists. You think of the old Gaelic song, you know, the uh, mist-covered mountains, the Scotta Fornic Hill, and you know, all of this. How can we pre pretend to love the Creator if we despise the creation? How can you say that you like an artist if you despise his work? The work of the artist is the outer manifestation of who he or she is. God has poured his heart out to us in love. How can I overlook that? All is so beautiful. And even the tragedies that we go through, it's good. They're for a reason. If we didn't have illness, we wouldn't appreciate our good health. I know you say, well, that sounds like 
knocking your head against the stone wall because it feels good when you stop. All right? Fine. That's all right. I guess that would work. But think about it. We have to have sorrow. And I've had a fantastic life. But a lot of sorrow has been there here with me. But the faith, if you have faith, you can deal with it. And people say to me, no, you know, uh, you must feel very badly, your wife is gone. I say, no, we had 53 wonderful years and a wonderful family. And uh, I guess I just had enough to get some things done. But as far as saying, I don't care to stay here long, I want out of here. Well, you know, that's funny, isn't it? Does anybody know what heaven is? It's not a geographical place. I guess people used to think of that. They used to think it was somewhere about 1,200 feet above the earth. <laughs> well, the balloons that started going up there, I never found it. And then we have jets that go to like 20, 30,000. And they haven't grown into it. Now, if we just go back to Scripture and see what Jesus had to say about that, a real heaven would be a place where you could join God not just to listen to heart music for really, do you want to listen to heart music forever? Do <laughs> you really want to walk in Golden Street? My aunt was telling me she was to a funeral over by Hartsville, not far from the hills from us. Some minister was going on and on about the person who died and how he would now be going on up there and walking through the pearly gates and on the Streets of gold. She said an old farmer turned over and said, turned next to her and said, I'd rather walk on the grass, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> you know? And so what is Celtic Christianity? It's a Christianity that binds man to God, not holding creation in disdain, but thanking God eternally every wonderful thing that comes to us. Appreciating 